Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles, and welcome to Blender for Noobs, and welcome back to the final part of the Design Your Own Car tutorial, part 15. In this part, what we're going to be doing is setting up our lighting and doing a final render, so this probably won't be too long of a uh, section at all. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do a file, save as. Let's call this 15 and call it lighting underscore render. Save that. And we need to create a backdrop for our car for our render. So I'm just going to choose shift A and create mesh, create a plane. And let's go ahead and just go into our three view. Let's move this right down just to where the wheels touch there, hopefully, and S to scale it up. And we can make this pretty big. Go to control up arrow, and I'm going to go to modifiers, add modifier, and add, give it the subdivision surface modifier, and smooth it out to two views and tab into edit mode and while I'm at it I'm just going to rename this to backdrop okay and go into vertex select and I'm just going to shift select these two verts go to three view and choose e extrude and I'm just going to bring this up like so this is sort of like what they would call a cyclorama in Hollywood movie term speak whatever <laughs> so once you've got that done um, do a control R edge loop and just bring it up there control R edge loop here and bring it out there just to shore up the edges and a select all W shade smooth and just check and make sure that um, it's just barely sitting on the tires here what this backdrop does is it gives you a nice a shadow and effect for your uh, render when you render the car without anything there uh, of course you don't get any shadows underneath the car which looks really bad okay so now we need to create oh actually no let's go back I'm gonna create a material for this backdrop so going into materials I'm gonna choose new material I'm gonna call this backdrop and I'm just gonna change this diffuse texture to the Veroni texture I'm sorry, the velvet texture. And I'm going to change the color. My car's green, so I want something that will contrast to that kind of. Uh, I don't want to make it really too much of any other color. Maybe a little bit of blue and maybe darken it up. I don't know. It's easy to play around with that, but what this velvet texture does is it gives a nice gradient change from your light to dark in the background so just a really nice background next we need to create our lighting so if you have a sun or point light anywhere in your scene just go ahead and X delete it and shift A go to mesh create a plane and scale it up and move it just above the car here 7 top view Somehow my uh, 3D cursor is not in the center, so shift S, cursor to center, and move my plane over to the center. And I'm just going to choose SX to scale it down a little bit, about the little bit of, over the width of the car, and SY to scale it along the length of the car. So something like that, just put it right over the car like so. And then go to your materials. I'm going to create a new material. We're going to call this lamp one. And come down here and I'm going to change the surface from diffuse to emission. So as you can see, you can do it here or up here. Depending on the complexity of what you're doing. It's if I'm doing just this, it's easier to do it down here. That's why I did it that way. So on the strength, I'm going to make it 2.5. And under the object data, come down to the bottom here to ray visibility, drop this down and uncheck the camera visibility. That way when it renders, 
you won't see the actual light panel, the plane that we just created there. And I'm just going to name this lamp one. Okay, and let's go ahead and shift D, duplicate this lamp, and go into one front view. And I'm just going to move it over. You can move it to the left or the right. Uh, I'm just going to rotate it like so, scale it down. And what this is doing is just giving a nice highlight along the side of the car as well. So you can move it fairly close in like so. And scale it down just a little bit more. And SY, just move it along the length of the car. So you get kind of a reflection there. And as you do your renders, you can kind of play with this, you know, the placement of it to get the best effect. But I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to call this one lamp 2 and go into my materials. I'm going to change this material. I'm going to uh, minus out that material. New material. Call this lamp 2 and uh, change the diffuse to emission and just make this uh, 1.5 should be enough. And I think that's all that I need there. I uh, should already have the camera unchecked because we duplicated that other lamp. Okay, so that is our basic setup. Now we need a camera. If you don't have a camera in your scene, just do a Shift A and create a camera right here. But I happen to have one ready right here. So I'm going to go in 7 top view, use one of my other windows, and I can do control 0, and that just uh, sets this view to the active camera. So I'm just going to G, move this out, and see if I can get kind of the view that I want. Go into 3, and rotate this, this 1, rotate it, and then G, move it down a little bit. And seven, maybe get a little bit more of the front of the car. Okay, I'll try something like that. And then once you got your camera placed, you can select your backdrop, go into seven top view, and just rotate it so that it is covering your uh, scene. I'm just going to bring this closer so make sure we are getting the backdrop. Okay, and Control S, quick save. So we're almost ready to do our render. We got our lighting done. So for the render portion, um, oops, just gonna move this camera a little bit. For the render portion, um, make sure that you're in Cycles Render. Otherwise, your render your material nodes won't show up correctly. And under the render settings. Uh, you can choose what size render you want. I'm going to choose 1280 by 720 and make it sure it's rendering the entire resolution. And then I'm going to come down to these settings here under sampling. And right now it is rendering at 100. And that's a good like test render just to see you know that the scene is looking how you want it to look. So I'm going to do a test render at 100, and then I'll probably bump it up to maybe 1,000 or maybe a little bit more just to get a nice good render of it. And uh, under performance, make sure that your tiles are set at 128 by 128. It doesn't really matter too much, but I just found like this setting um, generally renders the fastest overall. I mean, depending on your scene, you, can, you might have to change this around, but... Um, it's just a good all-around setting. And I believe that's all the render settings that we need to worry about. Another control S save. And now I'm just going to do a control up arrow and do an F12 render to see what we have. So there is our 100 sample render. As you can see, it's looking a lot nicer as far as the uh, shadows and the lighting and everything. Um, so luckily, I did do this 100 sample instead of 
the 1000 first and this is the reason why we do this um, I can see a few things that I need to fix and definitely one of the things I can see is the wheels are getting into the surface so I need to fix that another thing that I can see is these uh, this material that I created this texture material that I created for the uh, lights look looks completely stupid so I'll probably end up doing like a texture there the chrome is looking really nice to me um, you know not perfect by any standards I guess but um, really not bad the glass is looking okay I uh, really want to see through it a little bit better than that um, could actually put maybe a point light in there just to lighten things up but I think I'll just leave it as it is but all in all not bad even the door handle looks okay so I'm gonna fix these little problems and I'm gonna do another render at probably something like uh, I'll do 2000 just to see how it turns out and get a, you know get rid of a lot of this noise that's going on here um, another thing that you can do is experiment around Control up arrow and go back to our scene here you can use this lighting and actually add a Sun also and put it at like a low power and just kinda you know do different angles with it just to see the effects of it and see how you like it so I'm gonna adjust this stuff here and we're gonna do another render so I'm just gonna come in here and just move this down so it's barely touching the tires not sure why those tires aren't even but whoa it's because I um, curve that up a little bit so let's go ahead and put an edge loop here that will help even that out there we go okay so I'm ready to do my final render I'm gonna go ahead and go to my render settings and I think I'll just do full 3000 on this just to make sure that I have enough probably don't need quite that much but here we go so there you have it the 2016 Sapphire LX a car that you've never seen before in the real world so I didn't need to do it at 3,000 uh, samples. Probably I could have got away with probably a thousand samples. What I was seeing as noise on the hood, we look at this. It is actually our speckled paint job that's creating that effect. And if you want less speckly, uh, speckly look like that, what you can do, uh, one of the things you can do, of course, is turn down your lighting a little bit, but. Um, probably the better thing to do is remember in our, our nodes for the paint job the specularity we had is white you can move that white closer to the color of your paint job be it you know blue or red or whatever you're using uh, just move it a little bit closer to that color and you should be able to cut down on the, uh, the uh, that speckled look a little bit if you want to but not bad at all um, I think it turned out pretty good again I need to fix these lights and I'm thinking that uh, I just got to make this black. It just begs for that sleek uh, black look. So I'll probably be doing that. So I'm sure I'll be playing around with the different color schemes in order to get different looks for this car. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on designing your own car. It's kind of a different uh, take on modeling a car. I didn't want to just grab something that's already been done. I want to try to use our creativity a little bit and come up with something completely different something completely new and I think also with that flexibility when you're when you're creating something yourself it allows you to you know when you're changing the look of your car and changing what you're creating it allows you to come up with ways of modeling that you might not have encountered before of course uh, doing something that's already in existence the type of car or you know any other thing that you have that's in the real world you also get that experience of trying to get something 
as true to life as possible. So on that, you know, on both both ends of the spectrum, I think it's a learning experience. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.